Welcome back to the channel, everyone. All right, today is, for me, it's a big video, guys. So um, I'm going to give you guys just a quick install. I'm not gonna go through all the directions, really more of just an update of what we're doing on the channel. I'm sure you guys can already see from the thumbnail. Right now, we are working on installing our new aluminum port injection manifold. Um, as well as we have a Reflux Plus that's actually already been installed. I'm gonna give you guys a quick rundown of that as well too. If it is something that you guys need to, like a step-by-step -step direction, things like that, leave comments down in this video and I'll see what I can do to kind of you know break that down for you either on IG or maybe on a YouTube short or something like that. But uh, right now I'm gonna turn the camera around, show you guys what I have. I'm really excited about that, so let's get it started. Okay, so uh, as you guys probably know, I've been working on updates with the, with the new turbo and you'll probably, uh, I think if you look back at some of the old videos, you remember me probably saying that um, I was working on moving toward port injection. So as you guys know, I already have the fogger unit. Uh, the fogger unit is installed here um, and it is it is great for what it does but for for the uh, the power goals that I'm looking at for everything that we're working on uh, the the fogger was always actually going to be like a temporary uh, solution until I could save up for a full port injection setup and so that's what I have now I uh, found this port injection manifold on uh, the Facebook forums funny enough uh, it actually was a great deal came with 550 cc injectors um, I would have liked to have the 750 cc's, but these are brand new 550 cc injectors. Uh, whoever actually purchased this manifold actually really was going more for looks. Didn't uh, didn't have a chance to actually hook up the the injectors, so the injectors have actually never been ran. Um, the biggest issue that I had with this was that it did not come with the brackets necessary for um, the the manifold. So uh, I haven't been able to get this thing fitted on yet. Uh, the, and so one thing I have been doing, um, as you guys see, I have a little 3D printer back here. Uh, I have actually been working on fabbing up my own brackets. So I now actually have uh, brackets that I have built for this so that we will be able to install this uh, port injection manifold. Um, right now, the brackets are just used, uh, just using ABS plastic. Uh, that should be uh, that should be sufficient for me for uh, for the meantime. Um, I will actually have these uh, actually reprinted uh, with a nylon, so it'll be much stronger. But uh, so what we're going to do right now is I'm going to start tearing into uh, disassembling or, or actually removing the um, the port injection, not the port injection, the fogger. we got to remove the uh, the charge pipe, uh, start working on the intake manifold, uh, disconnecting the DME. Um, and before I do that real quick here, I'm going to remove this panel here and show you guys where I have my uh, reflex already mounted. OK, so there we go. We got the reflex mounted over here in the corner. Um, so Reflex Plus, uh, that is actually my ECA now as well too. So my ethanol content analyzer. Uh, if you guys do remember, I had the burger tuning um, uh, eth uh, ethanol, ethanol content analyzer. I uh, removed that, actually sold that uh, to one of the other guys um, on the uh, Shunkin group. But uh, so that's gone now, the Reflex is in place. Um, at, at the moment, I'm actually hooked up to my fogger with the Reflex as a controller. Uh, electronically controlling the two injectors on the fogger, uh, but we'll be going to be we'll be disconnecting that, and we'll actually be connecting the uh, the whole reflex the, the rails for the port injection. So um, um, I also just as a people are wondering, um, I have the charge pipe here. Uh, this charge pipe had had to be modified for the fogger, uh, and that's just because and that's why you actually see uh, the additional brackets or the additional spacer there. Um, I have a new charge pipe that is on its way from RVG Performance, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and start taking this apart and get everything. I can use this in, in the meantime until the new one comes back in, but uh, we will have that taken care of. So um, I won't. I don't want to bore you guys with a ton of this. Right now, I'm going to put this on a time lapse and start removing all of the charge pipe and, and all of my uh, the fogger and all that type of stuff. Uh, but I will check back with you guys here shortly, kind of let you know what I'm doing. All right, now, as you guys can see, I've got the charge pipe out. I've already disconnected my fuel rail here for the fogger as well. I've got all of the intake manifold bolts out up, up top. Um, hopefully, I'm not getting a bad glare on this. It kind of looks like I am. Um, now, what I need to do um, is actually disconnect the DME over here. Okay, so hopefully this will be able to show up here pretty good because uh, I've had some people uh, on previous videos complain that I didn't show you guys this when I did the starter. So uh, when you actually have uh, to take these uh, these um, these connections off, you're gonna actually press the button here. There's a little tab on the inside. I'm not sure if you can see that here. There's a little tab right here. 
Uh, and when, what I'm gonna do is I press that down and when I do, I move my the handle and it kind of got my hand, my old finger there, move the handle forward and that's what, see, that's what releases that clip here. So now that one is free, just like that, see it came out? Same thing here, I'm gonna press on the tab here, push the handle at the same time. I can kind of get that done with one hand and it's not looking good. There we go, okay. So I did that, press the tab, push the handle, pops out. There we go. Okay, so as you guys can see, we've got those three out. These two are pretty much uh, normal connectors where you they have clips on either side and you have to squeeze them to get them to release from the, from the uh, housing. Uh, what I had to do is grab a, a flathead screwdriver to squeeze in on this side. And then of course, with my finger, I could, I could push it on that side to get it to release. And then, I'll have to look at this last one. I don't recall on that one how that one comes out. Just a moment. Okay, and this one here is a slightly different. I actually don't know how this one works because the previous owner broke the clip, I think. So this one, uh, I guess, has just been sitting in there uh, due to just tension, but um, it, uh, it came out when I pulled on it. So I might need to address how to get that repaired at some point. But uh, those, the DME is now connected. As you can imagine, I did disconnect the battery, so make sure you've done that before you actually disconnect your DME. But uh, but yeah, back on. As you guys can see, an in old intake manifold or stock original in intake manifold is off. Uh, we can actually see our cylinders. And, and I was trying to see if I could get you guys a good look at this, but it's very hard to, I don't have really good lighting uh, to try to look down in there. But um, yeah, you're just not gonna be able to see, I don't think. I, I did a cleaning on these, I mean, probably 30, 30,000 miles ago, uh, where I just used an intake manifold cleaner um, or just basically intake valve cleaner and just tried to clean these out. It's an old video and I'll actually see, I'll try to see about linking it in the description, but uh, they still look really good. Uh, now keep in mind, I have been using uh, the fogger, which is actually uh, spraying my E85 into the intake air uh, right before the throttle body. So, uh, or I guess it would be right, uh, right after the throttle body. But uh, that does help clean those valves as well too. Uh, plus we'll get a lot more cleaning with the, with the new aluminum intake as well. But I uh, just thought I would give you guys a quick look at that. So uh, now that that's done, we're gonna have to worry about, or not really worry about, but we're gonna have to remove our uh, throttle body. So we'll go ahead and pull off our throttle body as well as the DME, get both of those attached to the new intake manifold. Uh, and then we'll start working on getting that set off into uh, set onto the engine. Uh, one thing here, just kind of pointing out, I will have to go ahead and pull out, like this is the harness for the uh, the fogger, so we won't need that anymore. Uh, if anybody has, has been considering getting a fogger, I will have one up for sale here shortly. Uh, and that way you guys can give it a trial run and let me know what you guys think as well too. Uh, but yeah, it, it's been been good for what it's what it's you know for what I've needed it for but uh, like I said it was kind of a placeholder for me to get the port injection so let's get it taken care of now right um, other than that you will notice here on my DME uh, connections there you can see some of those little T spades those are just tapping into the lines that I needed for the reflex uh, the reflex plus um, I'm not a I don't know how much I like those those T spade connectors because from time to time I I'm still um, I'm struggling a little bit on connection from time to time. So I might have to look at uh, doing something different there because uh, they do typically come with like posi taps or you could uh, replace all of the wiring harness. They have a an actually BMW harness, but uh, my Reflex Plus as well as that intake manifold, I was able to find for a good deal on Marketplace. And so that's the reason why I actually was able to to make this jump to the port, and, port injection uh, before I, th I thought I'd be able to. So, um, okay, well, I'm going to get started on uh, getting everything moved over on this intake manifold, um, but I will be back with you guys shortly. Okay, guys, so everything's mounted now on the intake manifold. We've got the map sensor mounted, DME. Uh, we've got, <laughs> I just actually broke my new mount, uh, my new bracket. So I got to torquing on it too much. So I've got another one on the printer going. Um, the intake manifold, I'm gonna, I'm not sorry, the intake manifold, the throttle body I'm gonna have to wait on just because I need the bolts. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this set into the engine. One of the first things I'm gonna have to do is go ahead and connect it to my fuel line uh, that's right up there. 
but um, I won't bore you guys with that. I will be back with you guys here in a minute once everything is set in place. Uh, you know, probably in the morning once I have those bolts. And then uh, I'll just kind of show you really quickly what I've got to do on the Reflex Plus. And just wanted to give you guys a quick update. I'm still working on the install. I ran into a little bit of a hiccup and it was mainly had to do with my fuel line, uh, which you'll see uh, my T is now missing from here. Uh, that is because I did not have uh, enough fuel line or it wasn't long enough to, to make it from the intake manifold underneath the intake manifold over here to this location. So what you can see, if you see it down here, actually all I did was just reverse my connection here. So just basically, this is the end that used to be connected here. I just basically swapped it around. So now I have my, um, I guess that's a 6 a uh, connection here that I can actually tap into for my fuel line and then run straight up. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and now get this installed. Just wanted to give you guys that a quick update. Then you'll also see my wiring here has come loose. Uh, that was on purpose. I had to actually take that all apart because of the connection for the ethanol content analyzer. Uh, I need to be able to connect it there. Um, but I also uh, picked up some, uh, the other day, I actually anticipated taking that apart and I picked up some um, some fabric wrap, some of the, the you know, that wrap ta tape to actually be able to tape that up even nicer instead of using the electrical. So I'll get that taken care of uh, probably a different day, but I'm gonna get back on this install now. Okay. So as you guys can see, and hopefully lighting is okay for you guys, uh, it's not looking that great right now, but we've got the intake manifold completely installed. All of our injectors, everything's connected. Uh, we've got the temporary charge pipe back in. Again, like I said, I do have a new RVG unit coming. Uh, now I have my laptop out. Uh, we are going to connect to the uh, reflex right here. There's a, a port to connect. We're just gonna connect to the reflex. I'm gonna turn the ignition on. And what we're gonna do is we're just basically just gonna load the new file that we need for, if I can get that uh, to connect. Yeah. Ah. Technical difficulties here, guys. There we go. Okay. So what I've already done is I've gone in and I've uh, found the Reflux Plus 550cc injectors for the N54 and N55 engine. Uh, the Reflex has already been updated with the newest firmware. I have the correct XDI, XDF file. So right now it's just a matter of connecting to it and actually uploading that file. Uh, I won't bore you guys with those details, but that should do it. So um, what I am excited to do is then go ahead and get myself a quick log, send that out to my tuner, David Shop, and see uh, what we need to do from there to get uh, our boost back up. So really exciting stuff. Just wanted to let you guys know and, and go ahead and wrap up this video. I will be back with you guys here probably in the next couple of days uh, or weeks or whatnot with some updates on the performance with the, uh, the new uh, port injection manifold. All right, guys, so it's been a few days. As you guys can see, we've got the new RVG charge pipe installed. So we, we got rid of the temporary uh, hacked up charge pipe because of the fogger unit. Um, installation went great. Uh, this here is now my, my brackets. As you can see, they have been nylon printed with, uh, I mean, they've been 3D printed with nylon. They actually have metal inserts as well. And then I've got some washers that I modified just to make sure that we keep that, that uh, fuel rail in position the way it needs to be. But uh, that is our final installation there. Let's put a smoke test, make sure I didn't have any, any leaks at all. And uh, we are back to boosting. So right now we're r running roughly 23, 24 PSI. Uh, David's been uh, fine tuning some things, making sure that the, the fuel map that we're running with the uh, reflex is where it needs to be and kind of tuning up our, our long fuel, uh, long term fuel terms. So uh, we're, we're to the point where we're happy now. And so really excited to really start turning the boost back up on this turbo. So should be having you guys an update real shortly uh, where I'm getting ready to head to the dyno uh, for a nice E50 dyno on the, the new Franken F55 turbo. You guys can see it hiding down there in the, in the, in the turbo blanket. So uh, really, really excited. So hopefully you guys are excited as I am, but uh, this is where we're gonna try to wrap this video up again. Guys, if you guys want a step-by-step -step instructions or kind of a run-through of how to install the Re Reflex Plus on the F10, drop those comments down below in the description and I'll try to see what I can do. Um, also, for a lot of people that have asked, I went back to a lot of my previous videos. I created a build list and I put that in the, uh, the, the description of tons of videos, guys. So if you guys are ever wondering what I have on my car, what I've done to it, what performance parts I have, this, that, and the other, check that build list first. 
Uh, on that build list, there should be links to most products as well as the uh, corresponding YouTube video for where I installed it or did a review of that product. So I tried my best to you know update that. If you guys have any additional items that are missing that you want me to add, just shoot me a, an Instagram message or a, a message in you, uh, here in YouTube and I will try to see if I can get that added as well. So um, if this is your first time to the channel, again, make sure you like and subscribe. If you're not following me on IG, make sure to follow me, guys, because I'm trying to give you guys more updates on IG of things that are happening on the car before they actually happen on YouTube. So uh, you guys be safe, and we will catch you guys in the next video.